You guys are here for one reason and one reason only. And that is for the comparison between the OG through the 2019. So with that being said, what time is it? Game time! Let's get on with the show. What's good everyone, it's Marvin, also known as MJO23Dan. Hey, if you're new here and you like Air Jordans, consider subscribing. All right, so my last video, I talked about the 2019 Air Jordan 11 black and red playoff, the bread, you name it. I decided to pair this up with a classic fit. This is the 1996 championship tee, as well as the official locker room hat. So this is by Logo Athletic from the 90s, and I decided to break it out just for the purposes of this video. So I think it's a great throwback. It makes sense for the Air Jordan 11 playoff. This is the shoe that Michael Jordan wore during the 1996 NBA playoffs, as well as the finals against the Seattle Supersonics. So the Jordan 11, it's one of those shoes that really bring people together during the holiday times. You know, obviously there is Christmas, Thanksgiving, and all that stuff, but the Jordan 11, as far as a consumer standpoint, this is the shoe to release. Now, I will argue that we have had Jordan 11s for pretty much the entire decade, and I feel that there should be another direction that they can go towards for releasing another model. Now, whatever model that may be, I mean, Jordan 1s are popular these days, and... You know, the black and red Air Jordan 1. Remember Michael Jordan and Santa Claus? Yeah, that one. I think that would be a popular release to do. But, like I said in the last video, I would love for Jordan Brand to release the OG cut of the Columbia 11s. And it just makes sense. Like, the Columbia 11s, the black and reds, and the Concords. Like, this set right here is the OG set from 1996. It just makes sense... To release all these joints but anyways that's another topic for another video what i want to get to you guys here today is the entire comparison of the og the 2001 the countdown pack from 2008 the 2012 retro and the 2019 so here we go all right so here is your 96 i've kept this thing for some years i actually bought it on resale this is not my original pair although i did wear a pair of this back in the day my first runs just went through the ground so i ended up getting a double just something about the og is the shape the toe i pointed that out in the last video and i'll go over that in this video as well with the other years to come so i really mess with the og the the cut the type of materials on it the way that they screen print the 23 on the back the way that the whole look of the of the Air Jordan 11. It just looks super clean. Now in comparison to the 2019, here are the differences. Actually, some of the similarities first. We did get the return of the white line of the patent leather from the OG. Now, although this isn't the same material as it was on the OG, the OG is going to have a thicker cut of patent leather. This one is not. Now for anyone that's ever owned Air Jordan 11, do you understand that there's some hot spots in the wearability of these guys so in particular the pinky toe and then like i brought up in the last video the crease right here on the medial side of the big toe but i mean that's just something that you expect with the og because they're using the premium materials the super raw materials that goes into shoes back then in the 90s that's what you can expect so pretty much along the years through 2019 they've refined it in some points you know I would say or I would argue that 2012 and 2008 weren't really good editions of the Air Jordan 11 black and red. But you can pretty much see like where production was throughout those times. So getting back to it, the OG versus the 2019. 
definitely thicker laces on the OG. Something that hasn't been present since the retro of 2001. They went away with the style of the thicker laces to go with a little bit more of a slimmer lace. Now there is one thing that is bothersome about the laces for the OG and the 2001. They do get thick, so actually putting them through the eyelets here of the nylon straps, you kind of have to squeeze them out a little bit and then feed them through. But that was just the style of the OG back then. These laces are actually supposed to represent the net of a basketball hoop. Now according to Tinker Hatfield in Driven From Within, this is a book by Michael Jordan. If you guys are interested in this book, I'll link a copy of this in the description where you can purchase it. But this pretty much goes through Air Jordans 1 through 20 and it's a great read. So if you're a collector, this is something to definitely have in the collection. But anyways, he goes on to say that the Jordan 11 has always been one of his favorite models. And I can't blame the guy. He's the one that created pretty much all the shoes that Michael Jordan wore in his playing career. I honestly think he's a genius when it comes to that stuff. I mean, you're talking about a person who had the mindset to create the Air Max 1. Like, that shoe is pretty popular in itself along with the Air Jordan series. So, I feel like Tinker Hatfield doesn't get as much credit as he deserves, as he is one of the pioneers to sneaker design. All right, so the side-by-side -side differences of the Greek style lettering. Not too much difference in that. In the OG, you got a fatter Jumpman, and in the retro of 2019, you got a skinnier Jumpman. Jumpman Jordan on the tongue is pretty similar. The 23s on the back are pretty similar as well, although I do give the nod to the 1996 because of how centered it is in comparison to the 2019. It's also got a better screen print on the back, whereas I feel like with the 2019, it could be something that could fade over time. Probably not as bad as something like the 2008 where it pretty much faded after a few wears, but nonetheless, it's there. So I know this is the right shoe. I'm gonna be doing the right shoe of each Air Jordan, but I can tell you that the Jumpman's on both shoes, the right and the left, for the OG, do face towards the toe. And that's what we also get with the 2019. So left and right, left and right of both the OG and the 2019, both face towards the toe. Now the differences between the Jumpmans, you guys can see here. You're gonna get a fatter Jumpman logo on the OG versus something that makes a bit more sense on the retro from 2019. You also get the little butt crack there on the OG, which is pretty much on the 2001, the 2008, and the 2012. It was not till later that they refined the Jumpman or the embroidery of the Jumpman on Air Jordans. And I've said that in other videos as well. As far as the patent height of the OG versus the 2019, it is similar. So if we measure the back of the OG, we get about an inch in length. On the 2019, you're gonna get something similar there as well, about an inch. Now if I measure from the second point on the retro to pretty much the bottom of the split, it's gonna be just shy of two inches. Whereas on the OG, we're gonna get a good two inches. So you guys question the patent leather cut of the 2019, and we've been getting this for the past few models of the 11, and it's pretty much just a throwback to the OG. So that's what you get with the patent heights. I've seen comments where people prefer the OG cut of the patent leather, and some that prefer something of a lower cut. Now mind you, when we get to the 2001, we do get the lower cut of the patent leather. So obviously, the cut of the patent leather from the OG has stayed with the OG, but not until recently, the retros, we've started getting the higher patent cut. And that's why I've been clamoring for the Columbia 11s, for them to get it correct, because Legend Blues were not Columbia's. Obviously, it was a different color, different patent cut, shape, all that. So, if we're getting Concords, if we're getting the black and reds, if we're getting the Space Jams that are all correct, why not do a Columbia? It just makes sense. Isn't that shoe just so sexy, though? Ugh. But going back to the OG, there's something also about the sole. So, in 2019, it's an opaque-looking sole. It's a little bit dull in comparison to the OG. Both colors are actually true red, but it is a different shade. So you're gonna get a little bit more of that candy apple looking sole on the OG, and it's a lot more clear. Now, of course, you know, 1996, it's gone through some years, 23 years to be exact. And we all know that color differentiates over time. So while my Concords are 
awesomely a decent color and they also use a different rubber compound for the OG something different on the Columbia's but I think the red bottom on the Air Jordan 11 black and red is just something that gravitates people more towards this shoe it's not going to yellow over time it does turn a bit like of an orange color and then as you wear it turned into a brownish color but that's just the oxidation and wear over time so one thing I do want to point out with the OG is that within these pods you can actually see through to the red sole and that's not something that you can see on the 2019 now I'm not sure if that's something that they just corrected and decided that they were just gonna keep but this is pretty much what the translucent sole of the red for the OG look like and then another question I got was about the carbon fiber so on the previous black and red Air Jordan 11s the carbon fiber has always been gray and black now this is the OG this is what it looks like white and black this is the retro from 2019 white and black so you're going to get that similarity between the shoes a lot of people call the 2019 fake looking something that just wasn't ideal for an Air Jordan 11 and I get it it's just recency bias a lot of people know the black and red Air Jordan 11 for a gray and black carbon fiber look and here's one thing about carbon fiber as well now I do feel like this is plastic obviously carbon fiber takes a lot of time to make and get correct and pretty much that's what they did when they were making 90s base shoes 80s base shoes you can even go back to the 70s a lot of that stuff was manual labor so when you start getting into the 2000s the 2010s you got to have faster production you got to pump out a lot of these shoes there's reportedly 2 million pairs made for the black and red Air Jordan 11. There is no way that they're going to be able to compensate and make real carbon fiber and sell through 2 million pairs. It's also not only time consuming, it's also not cost effective. So I understand where the brand, when they make retros, they need to compensate somewhere where if a person like you and I, a consumer, will get the shoe and be like, Oh, that's not real carbon fiber. Why are they using plastic? So it's just something that where you need to look at it from a brand's perspective. What areas of a shoe can I manipulate that is not going to make something drastic, but still make the shoe look like it did back in the day? And I get it. There's purists out there that hate that and they want everything OG no matter what. But like I said in my previous video with the patent leather, and that nasty crease that was on the medial side of this big toe here for something that is a premium material as far as patent leather that's going to suck in these because when you guys start wearing these you're actually going to feel that and it's it's not a great feeling it also makes the shoe a little bit heavier so i suppose going with a thinner cut while still looking like the og there's some refinements that they've done that have actually that have actually made the shoe just fine so in all other videos that I also put out was the bonding of these two pieces. So, and we used to call this Cordura mesh because I believe that's what the brand was licensing when they were creating the Air Jordan 11. So it's Cordura, but they've bonded these two pieces right here. So you'll notice a difference with the OG versus the retros. So they've overlapped these two pieces and sewn it through. Whereas on the retros, on your 11s, you're not going to see that piece. So it's actually pretty seamless. And they've actually, instead of overlapping the materials, they've put them through and sewn it on the underside. So that's a cleaner look to me. I like that. But, you know, as going back to shape, it, it's something that I feel like Jordan Brand can correct. And this is when we go to the toe. So you do see that slimmer toe on the OG versus something that is on the retro. So you'll see that there's more height to the 11's toe versus the OG. It's a slimmer toe. And that makes a big difference because it goes back to fit. People have asked me, how does the retro 
fit compared to the OG or to the other shoes because the other shoes were pretty restrictive and I've had to go half size up, blah, 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 blah. I would say with the newer style Air Jordan 11s, go with your true size. So I've stuck with my size 10. They fit great. As far as something like 2008, 2012, it burned your pinky toe. Not something that I appreciated. So anyways, enough of the OG. You guys know everything about this already. It does come with the Nike Air insole, just like the 2019. And you know, that's about it with the comparison for that. So let's move on to the 2001. So 2001 was a good addition and they changed the shape just a little bit. They also made the patent leather a little bit lower. No more white trim on the patent leather. You could see that they were trying to fix the stitch on that third eyelet there where they tried to bring the two pieces inward and sewn it on the other side versus something that was overlapping. So they were trying to change the 11's aesthetic from the OG. Now I'm not sure why exactly they did that. They probably didn't have the molds anymore and they had to recreate something. Uh, they still gave us great leather on the back just like the OG. Oh and speaking about the 2019, it's a synthetic leather so you know again like i said they need to compensate somewhere with the price or else this thing would be like 250 bucks but anyways the tongue of the air jordan 11 from 2001 still looks great do you think because with a lower cut of the patent leather they've compensated for the height so actually the og is actually going to be the tallest of all the other retros even the 2019 so the heights of the og 11 is a little bit taller whereas they've slimmed it down just a tad for the retros. They have the screen print of the 23 on the back. This is probably the last time that they've done it correctly where they try to do it for 2008 heat press. They try to do it with 2012 heat press. 2019, I felt like they screen printed it but not as good as 2001 and 1996. So we're getting there but we're not there yet. Here's the Jumpman for the 2001. And again, these jump man still faced towards the toe on the left and right pair. 2001 had pretty good padding in your ankle area. 2019, still better than 2008 and 2012. So 2001 was a pretty good retro. As far as the laces are concerned, it did have a thicker style lace, but still not as thick as the OG. So. While the OG laces, it's it's kind of gotten a little bit grayish over time because of age and fading and whatnot. The 2001 had the black laces, but still the same style. Okay, the height of the patent for the back of the 2001 is going to be about one inch versus the 2019. We had said that that is also one inch. From the bottom of the split there with the Jumpman, to the bottom towards the midsole we're gonna get about an inch and three quarter and then on the retro for 2019 we're going to get about two inches and then as noted you can see that they changed the carbon fiber there to the gray and black versus the OG which was white and black okay so moving on to the countdown pack it's been seven years since the retro of 2001, and we get the countdown pack of 2008. This shoe was included in a pack alongside the Air Jordan 12 Taxi, where 11 and 12 equal 23. And every month they released a different pack to equal 23, Michael Jordan's number. So I feel like 2008 was probably the worst Air Jordan release as far as 11s are concerned. I've actually had a pair that I beat down as well and it is not something that I would recommend. So this is where the shape pretty much went different. The Jumpman on the left shoe actually pointed towards the rear now and that actually started with the DMP pack of 2006 with a DMP 11. So with that change uh, it started becoming a little bit more different. Something that we we're digressing from the OG. It is no longer the same shoe. We can see that the Jumpmans there are different as well. And then, like I said, they started heat pressing the 23 on the back. So that's the comparison with those. 
this thing faded over time actually really badly where there were people actually on the internet selling 23s and having you do your own I guess heat press along with an iron-on um, yeah that existed and you know this is something that was just not made very well the leather was also very stiff it's a stiff shoe overall and the padding was just I don't know I, I just really dislike the 2008 it's probably one of the worst shoes as far as the 11s are concerned that were created uh, they went with a really skinny even something that is similar to like an Air Jordan 11 low where they really went skinny with the rope laces up top like I would say the nylon all throughout all the years have stayed pretty consistent but the laces have changed the padding has changed Colors have changed also, like they were starting to go with varsity red as opposed to like true red, which the shoe should be. They continued on with the lower cut of the patent leather, but something about this shoe, it just really burned the pinky toe. And there was little to no cushioning in the shoe whatsoever. And that goes back to the compensation part, like they were creating Air Jordans every single month. And I guess at that time, in my opinion, I would say that production didn't meet the demand and so they really had to go cheap on those packs in order to compensate for people's wants so in comparison to this and the 2019 you can see the difference of the sole you're going to get a brighter sole on the countdown pack as opposed to the darker opaque look of the 2019 again the gray and black carbon fiber this is getting a little bit more squarish. And when you get to something like the 2012, you'll see that it's become a lot more squarish. So yeah, let's go to the 2012. So this is the last time the Air Jordan 11 Black and Red had released prior to 2019. Actually missed out on these. A lot of people were really mad about them or Jordan brand not including the pullout box. And that story has always been regurgitated over time where they're saying that the box wasn't ready for production and they pretty much just had the lid. So they you just used a regular style Jordan brand box at the time and just threw in the plastic insert in them. And people were really appalled about that because if you're presenting a shoe that has been one way and then you change it or you forget something and you still charge the same amount, it's not going to rub people the right way. It's going to rub them the wrong way. So... You know, there's a lot of woes when it comes to Jordan brand and the practices or missing deadlines or, you know, something. Like, I honestly, over the years, have always looked at it from a business standpoint. Like, what did they do wrong that made the customers retaliate? You know what I mean? Like, and I, I, don't, I don't mean to do it myself because, I, you know, I'm getting older and... I'm starting to understand the industry a little bit more and how like operations work and stuff like that and I think that's just the mentality that most people need to have is that they can't always get the retro right and you know it, it could be just a business move it could just be that they're saving money but you know when you come to something over the years and it's not the same as the OG people are going to be upset so when they started doing the remaster series probably around like 2015 or so the dedication there was for them to get as close to the OG as possible now getting as close to the OG as possible is just that as possible it's not going to be the OG so people that used to provide the patent leather for the OG there's vendors and stuff it's just like this the Popeye's chicken sandwich returned for the second time after a hiatus, right? But then I tried it actually for the second time and it was different. It's a retro, right? So it seems like they're using a different vendor or somebody that can actually supply them to meet the demand. And that's what these retros are. It's just having to find, I guess, a cheaper alternative to be able to meet the demand to make more of these shoes. And so when you like see customizers on social media and they're actually using premium materials for something, those are like one of ones or just small runs of something that is just great. And again, I think that's just something that people need to understand is that when you have a short production run of something, it's going to be a better quality shoe versus something that's mass produced. And so anyways, that's just something that, you know, you guys should understand and just going to have to learn to accept. But anyways, going back to the 2012, 
So the 23 on the back, just like the 2008, not sure if it has fallen off for you guys. You let me know in the comment section below. The Jumpman is different also as well. The embroidery of the recent, recent Air Jordan 11s are much cleaner than on the 2012s. So they actually went with a skinny lace again, but not as skinny as 2008. I remember 2008, 2012-ish, there were a lot of, I guess, factories overseas that were producing fake Air Jordan 11s. And one of the things also was the R in Jordan on the tongue. And that was just something that people looked out for. It was like Jumpman Jockton. And there was no like line for the R there, but you know, on this one it is. But uh, I think that was apparent more on the Concord side of things. So in 2011, uh, there was a big boom of like fakes and how close they were getting to the production pairs of the shoes. And there was the whole big debate about whether people had retros or fakes and whether they would actually just go with the fakes because it just looked like the real things. But I've always purchased my sneakers through obvious means, like through retail chains, boutiques, and things of that nature. So I definitely don't mess with the fakes it's not something that I would ever review and something that like I would bring to you guys when I do these comparisons I show you the legit stuff so you know this I, I've grown up watching the Bulls I've grown up watching Michael Jordan this is my passion this is my hobby this is my business so when I show you guys these things this is something that I've lived through over the years all right, so that's it. That's the comparison review. If I left anything out, let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, you guys can probably ask each other questions and you know get some answers, but hope I covered everything that you guys had questions about. So down below, I'll leave links if you guys wanna purchase, uh, I guess, any of the years through StockX. With all that being said, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for your support. I hope you guys enjoy the comparison review and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.